congratulations. You built your app, tested it, shown it to your friends and family. The next step is to put it into the Windows Store and start making money. But before you do so, you need to make sure it'll pass certification. I'm Michael Schroeder, and I'm going to give you a few tips on how to smoothly get through the app certification and how to maximize the revenue for your app. Let me walk you through how to use the Windows Application Certification Kit, or WAC, to ensure that your app passes technical certification on the first time through. This kit is what the certification team runs every Metro-style app through, and you can run it directly from Visual Studio. You should definitely run your app through this kit and fix any issues that it identifies before submitting your app to the Windows Store. To run the WAC, build your app for release, not debug, and then in the Store menu, select the option to create an app package. When asked whether you want to build a package for the Windows Store, select No. Press Next, and then press Create on the next page. Once the app package is created, you'll see a link to the folder where it was created, and a button on the bottom to launch the Windows App Certification Kit. Press this button. The kit will run for a few minutes, and then produce a result summary, which you can use to fix any issues before submitting to the Windows Store. Once you create the package, you should test it out on various Windows 8 machines that have been configured to sideload apps. You can even create virtual machines for Windows 8 on other operating systems, but apps that are graphically intensive may not work well when virtualized, as GPU acceleration is typically not possible in these environments. Whereas end users will typically get their apps directly from the Windows Store, you can develop or unlock a computer by installing the Windows developer tools or by modifying the group policy on the system. Take a look at this TechNet article for more details. One of these methods must be done before apps can be sideloaded onto a Windows 8 system. Now, on the system where you just created the package, go to the folder where the package was created and zip up all the files in that folder and send the files to another machine to test on. Unzip the files and then run the PowerShell script Add App Dev Package on that Windows 8 machine. You can run the script by right-clicking on the script file and selecting the option Run with PowerShell. If you don't have lots of different machines with various screen sizes to test on, you can use a simulator from Visual Studio. With the simulator, test your app with different screen resolutions and orientations, and you can even simulate touch gestures. The minimum resolution for Windows 8 Metro-style apps is 1024 by 768. Make sure that your app works in all the resolutions available in the simulator, all the way up to 2560 by 1440. Here's a tip. If your app implements the search contract, Make sure you test it out in 1024 by 768, as the space for the search screen is reduced by the width of the search pane. Now you're ready to publish your app. When you upload your app to the Windows Store, you can choose how to monetize it. You can publish a free app, add advertising to it, make a paid app, or even use your own commerce engine. If you make a paid app, you should consider adding a trial mode. We've seen that with Windows Phone, that using a trial mode in your app will make it 70 times more downloaded and on average 10 times more purchased than if you don't make a trial mode. It's up to you to decide what the differences are between a trial and paid app. For example, you could limit your trial by features, by time, or even by number of uses. In your code, you just check license information is trial property, and then listen for the license information license changed event. A popular way to make money with apps is with in-app advertising. You can use any ad platform in your app, but if you want one specifically built for Metro-style apps on Windows 8, Take a look at the SDK from Windows Advertising. If you're building a video-related app, pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll ads are very effective. The open source player framework for Windows 8 is a great starting point for doing so, with built-in support for various ad standards. Another way to monetize your free or paid app is through in-app purchases. You can define these products as features, upgrades, or even content. You can also define a time limit for in-app purchases where a user, for example, might purchase three months of access to your premium content in your app. You're in control of the price of in-app purchases, which can be priced anywhere from $149 on up. If you're planning on selling your app through the Windows Store, then you'll receive 70% of the revenue from app sales and in-app purchases for new apps. Apps that make at least $25,000 will receive 80% of the revenue from app sales and in-app purchases. Today, many online businesses already have their own commerce engine or they're using third-party commerce systems. In Windows 8 Metro-style apps, you can do this too by making a free app and then enabling commerce through your existing system, therefore keeping 100% of the revenue from your app. As Windows 8 and the Windows Store are available in many markets worldwide, 
you have the potential for a huge audience for your app, so localizing it might be a good idea. If you want to start planning for localizing, make sure you put your string resources into a JavaScript resource file and then call WinJS resources process all when your page loads. Then you can use the resource identifiers from the JavaScript resource file in your HTML and JavaScript. Take a look at the quick start for a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. Before you submit your app to the Windows Store, make sure that you follow all the certification requirements. Here's a tip. If your app accesses the internet, you must include a privacy policy in your app and in the app submission. Once your app is in the Windows Store, users will start to download it. If you're like me, you'll start to watch the store's analytics reports to track download trends, ratings, crashes, and how the revenue comes in. Since the adoption reports let you see how people in various regions find, download, and use your app, you'll have a great lens on how best to grow your user base. Make sure you watch the ratings and comments. If someone takes the time to write a thoughtful comment on your app, take that feedback seriously. You can also use these reports to understand how in-app purchases are doing and how pricing affects purchases. The cool thing is you can adjust pricing of your app or in-app purchases at any time without republishing. You're in the final stretch of launching your app. We'll help you reach the finish line and get your great app into the Windows Store. And remember to check out the daily tips and the Windows Dev Center website for deeper information. I can't wait to see your Metro-style app in the Windows Store.